crypto allows you to send money around the world instantly. Yeah, you can send money. Uh, you can just download a wallet. You don't need a bank. You can download that wallet. I could send money to you and you can send it yeah. to your friend in, uh, you know, wherever in the world, yeah. in Lebanon, El Salvador, wherever. Another common crypto and blockchain claim is that it allows you to instantly send money anywhere in the world cheaper with no middlemen. This, like many arguments, is based on the Nirvana fallacy. If you have the world's crappiest bank, which charges outrageous fees and takes days to transfer money, then maybe crypto might seem like an appealing alternative. But the reality is, almost all of us have ways to instantly transfer money from point A to B, quickly, cheaply, and conveniently. Yes, some of those transfers may take a few days to settle, but this isn't a fault of the technology. It's a feature, a byproduct of security and protection from fraud, what most people want. We've already covered previously how transaction fees work in crypto, so the argument crypto is cheaper doesn't hold water. Crypto transaction fees can vary wildly depending upon the time of day, and it's hard to even tell what fee you should pay to transfer crypto. If you don't pay a high enough fee, your transaction may never go through. You don't have this problem with traditional systems. When crypto advocates talk of speed and cheap transactions, they cherry pick a best case scenario and ignore everything else. But perhaps the biggest problem with this claim is the notion that sending crypto equals sending money. That's misleading. When someone needs to send money to someone else, what's the typical scenario? Usually someone needs to pay for something, right? Well, unless that something is illegal drugs, cyber ransom, or a cappuccino at a crypto-friendly coffee house in Costa Rica, chances are you can't spend what you're sent until it's converted back into fiat, aka traditional money. 99.9% .9 of the real world doesn't accept crypto, and the 0.1% that does have limitations on how much they can accept because of money laundering liabilities. When you send money using PayPal, ACH, or Western Union, the recipient ends up with actual legal tender, real money. No additional conversion is needed to pay debts. But with crypto, the resulting tokens sent to somebody still have to be converted in order to be used as money. And that process of ending up with something you can spend involves an entirely new set of conversions, fees, and middlemen. Crypto enthusiasts ignore the almost always necessary second half of the transaction when they make this unfair comparison. Bitcoin maxis address this argument by saying they're waiting until Bitcoin comes as ubiquitous as fiat, then no conversions will be necessary. This is what we call the argument from future crypto fantasy land. In a future crypto utopia, Bitcoin will be legal tender everywhere and worth 100k plus. Then and only then will their arguments seem even remotely reasonable. Meanwhile, back in the real world, you're out of such luck. We could spend an entire hour just explaining the myriad of ways in which it's incredibly unlikely any crypto would ever be legal tender in a major country. So to summarize, sending crypto is sending crypto. Sending fiat is sending actual money, spendable everywhere. If you want crypto to be spendable like fiat, you have to convert it back into fiat. That final process involves even more time, fees, and inconvenience than simply using any of the much more reliable traditional methods like PayPal, wire transfers, MoneyGram, etc. Blockchain does not even add a single benefit to the situation.